Hello and welcome to Time Bomb and the Lake Powell update for December 2023. We'll begin with a brief overview of the current status of the Glen Canyon Dam and its reservoir Lake Powell. After reviewing the statistics, we'll uncover the top five hidden secrets of the Glen Canyon Dam. Before we get started, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate the support. The water level at Lake Powell is currently 3,570 feet above mean sea level. That's 81 feet above minimum power pool and 129 feet below full pool. The current water level represents an increase of 46 feet since the beginning of the year. The current elevation is 66 feet below the historical average for this date. Lake Powell's record high water level was set on July 14, 1983 at 3,708.34 feet. The current water level is 50 feet above the record low for Lake Powell that was set on April 22, 2022 at 3,522 feet. The current capacity of the Lake Powell Reservoir is just 35.29% of full pool capacity. Lake Powell has benefited greatly from last winter's record-breaking snowpack and the spring runoff. The lake is currently 44 feet above the water level at this same time last year. Compared to 2021, the reservoir is 30 feet higher. However, it is still below the elevations from 2018, 2019, and 2020. Kentucky bluegrass is famous worldwide for its durability, fine texture, and attractive green color. It's a common and incredibly popular lawn grass in North America. It provides the playing surface at Yankee Stadium in Fenway Park. Even the White House lawns feature Kentucky bluegrass. But what does Kentucky bluegrass have to do with the Glen Canyon Dam? Well, when the Glen Canyon Dam was constructed in 1964, the steel penstocks that feed water to the hydroelectric plant located at the base of the dam, these pipes were exposed and they experienced severe vibration when in use. Engineers decided to bury the pipes in soil to act as a sort of buffer against the damaging vibrations. Later, that Kentucky bluegrass was planted on top of the dirt to prevent the dirt from getting blown away. The grass also provides a mild cooling effect that reduces temperatures inside the power plant that lies below. Today, when you peer over the edge of the dam, you can still see the beautiful, well-manicured, 8,600-square-foot Kentucky bluegrass lawn. The Glen Canyon Dam was a monumental project, both in terms of scale and cost. When it was planned, it was set to be the third highest dam in the world, standing 700 feet above the lowest bedrock. The dam contains over 4.7 million cubic yards of concrete in the dam itself and another 5.2 million cubic yards in the dam's supporting structures, such as the power plant. Additionally, the 900,000 kilowatt power plant installed at the dam was ranked the seventh largest in the world at the time. But contrary to popular opinion, it's the Glen Canyon Dam, not its flashy famous neighbor, the Hoover Dam, but the Glen Canyon Dam that's the largest single construction contract in the history of the Bureau of Reclamation. Take that, Hoover Dam. The construction of the Glen Canyon Dam required significant engineering feats, one of which was the creation of the river diversion tunnels. The primary purpose of these tunnels was to divert the Colorado River around the construction site of the Glen Canyon Dam. This is necessary to create a dry work environment for the construction of the dam's foundation. The diversion tunnels drilled directly through the canyon walls were among the first structures to be built. However, when construction of the dam neared completion, the diversion tunnels had to be closed off to stop the flow of the river through the tunnels and redirect that flow through the dam itself. To accomplish this, workers engineered and constructed a plug for each tunnel. It's the plugging of these two diversion tunnels that started the filling of the dam's reservoir in Lake Powell. These two plugs are engineering marvels in themselves, 
But what most people don't know is that portions of the old diversion tunnels are still in use today. That's right, the bottom portion of each of the tunnels was re-engineered and are still in service today as part of the dam spillway system. This repurposing of the diversion tunnels into spillways is a testament to the foresight and ingenuity of the dam's engineers. But it's these repurposed spillway outlets that lead us to our next secret. Remember the time when Lake Powell Reservoir overflowed and severely damaged the Glen Canyon Dam? Well, not many people do. Let me take you back to the winter of 1982. The winter of 1982-83 saw unusually heavy snowfall in the Rockies. This was followed by a warm spring with heavy rains that led to a quick snowmelt at runoff. This led to unexpectedly high volumes of water flowing into Lake Powell. As a result, the water levels at Lake Powell rose dramatically, nearly to the top of the dam. This situation posed a risk of overtopping, and that's where water could flow over the top of the dam, potentially causing severe damage to the structure. To prevent this overtopping, the dam's spillways were opened to release the water. However, this was the first time the spillways had been used at such a capacity since the dam's completion. The massive flow of water through the spillways caused unexpected erosion called cavitation. After the crisis, extensive repairs and modifications to the spillways were required, costing hundreds of millions of dollars. The 1983 event was a wake-up call for engineers and dam managers. It led to a re-evaluation of spillway design and reservoir management practices, not just at the Glen Canyon Dam, but at all dams across the United States. And now for my favorite, the plywood incident. I love this story. Okay, let's go back to that flooding incident in June of 1983. As the water level in Lake Powell rose dangerously close to overtopping the dam, there was a crucial need to increase the dam's capacity. The spillways, which were already in use, had suffered damage, limiting their effectiveness. So engineers had to come up with a way to increase capacity of the dam. And they decided to install plywood flashboards on the top of the dam. These flashboards were essentially plywood panels that were added to the crest of the dam to increase its height. It sounds crazy. But this scheme actually worked. The addition of the plywood flashboards effectively raised the height of the dam, increasing its capacity to hold back the water. This was a temporary measure only, just to buy some time and manage the water levels more effectively. The installation of these flashboards was a risky and challenging operation. Workers had to brave the elements and the proximity to the massive flows of water to secure the plywood into the dam. After the crisis passed and water levels were stabilized, the plywood flashboards were removed. The use of plywood in this context is often cited as an example of innovative problem solving under extreme pressure. It demonstrated the creativity and resourcefulness of the engineers and workers at the dam. And I have to give props to the Bureau of Reclamation in this one. They did a terrific job. Hey, as always, thank you for watching. I'll be back with another video in a week, maybe two weeks. In the meantime, please check out some of my other videos and consider subscribing to our channel. We really appreciate your support.